Hi, and welcome to this video about our EM54 Part 23 Compliant Visual Alarm Devices, or VADs. One in seven people in the UK are deaf or hard of hearing, and they, as well as those who work in noisy environments, such as factories, require a visual signal, as well as an audio warning in the event of an alarm. Prior to 2010, there was no industry standard to determine the light output that a VAD should emit. Therefore, EM54 Part 23 was introduced to standardise the light output requirement. There are now three categories that a VAD can be rated under. C for ceiling mounted device, W for wall mounted device, and O for open category device. The specified output for a VAD is now required to be 0.4 lux at all points within the specified coverage volume. And all manufacturers are now required to label their VADs in a specific way. A ceiling mounted VAD might be rated as C37.5, where C stands for ceiling. The two numbers represent the coverage volume in the shape of a cylinder, where the first number is the maximum ceiling height the VAD can be mounted, and the second number is the diameter of the coverage. A wall-mounted VAD might be rated W2.45, where W stands for wall. The numbers again represent the coverage volume, this time in the shape of a cube, where the first number is the maximum height on the wall that the VAD can be mounted, and the second number is the length and width of the coverage. It's important to note that a risk assessment should always be carried out in order to determine the requirement of VADs of a specific environment. Bear in mind that uh, once a VAD is in situ, the light output can't be measured as there is currently no test equipment available on the market. So, it's important to keep a record of as-built installation plans detailing the VAD positions and their original ratings for inspection purposes. Hachiki Europe is dedicated to the improvement of life safety and continually invests in research, development and testing to ensure we bring the most innovative and reliable products to the market and these new VADs are no exception. Let's take a closer look. Here they are then, our EM54 Part 23 compliant VADs. A ceiling beacon, the CHQCB, which is rated Category C. A wall beacon, the CHQWB, which is rated Category W and an updated version of our wall sounder beacon, the CHQ WSB2, which is rated category O. We'll talk about the wall sounder beacon in a moment, but for now, let's concentrate on the wall and ceiling beacons. As you can see, the casings are available in white, ivory or red to suit any aesthetic requirements. The beacons feature high intensity LEDs and you can choose either red or white. It's worth pointing out that you can choose either LED color, but it must remain consistent throughout the building to comply with BS5839. Both devices have the capability of variable coverage volumes and this helps simplify the range. For the ceiling beacons, these volume coverages are all based on a maximum ceiling height of 3 meters. So, subject to control panel compatibility, you can set the coverage of a white LED beacon to 5, 7.5 or 10 meters diameter. For red LED beacons, this coverage can be set to 7.5 or 9 meters diameter. For the wall beacons, the coverage volumes are based on a maximum height of 2.4 meters from floor level. So again, subject to your control panel, you can set the coverage to 5x5, 6x6 or 7x7 meters for white LEDs and 5x5 meters for red LEDs. For very large open areas, we also have a ceiling beacon capable of providing a coverage of 15 meters diameter, again available in a range of case colors with white LEDs. By the way, don't worry too much if your panel software isn't up to date. The ceiling beacons will work right out of the box at a default coverage of 7.5 meters diameter and the wall beacon default is 6 by 6 meters. The large open area ceiling beacon default is 15 meters diameter. Both devices have been designed to fit onto our standard mounting base and because of this, the new ceiling beacon can directly replace our existing beacon, the CHQAB, as it has the same product type code at the panel. There are many other benefits to choosing our new beacons. For example, the circuitry in each device is monitored continually for faults, which will show up at the panel. There is also the ability to power each device externally from a separate 24 volt power supply to save on loop current. The control panel can be programmed to perform a daily LED check, but also when in alarm mode, the VAD will monitor its own LED light output to ensure a flash occurs. In both instances, any failure will be indicated at the panel. Some of these functions are subject to control panel compatibility, so please check with your panel manufacturer. 
The CHQ WSB2 is classified as an open category VAD. The open category allows manufacturers to specify the coverage shape and volume per product. You should check the product specification for maximum mounting heights. So let's have a look at them working. Thank you for watching this video, we hope you found it useful. For further product information, please visit our website at the address on the screen. Alternatively, you can download the Hachiki Brochure app to obtain our VAD overview. The app is available on Android and iOS and is free, just search for Hachiki. Don't forget, you can also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and if you're an existing customer, why not request to join our LinkedIn customer group. To subscribe to the Hachiki Europe YouTube channel, and be alerted when new content is available, please click the video now. See you next time.